Coach, uh, disappointing loss, I'm sure, in that uh, Bayou Classic. Talk about <coughs> your first loss in that game as head coach, uh, what it was like uh, to be on the wrong side of that one. Well, before I get started, I'd just like to say uh, I really appreciate you guys covering me week in and week out. I think you guys have done an outstanding job doing all the things that Grambling needs in order to stay out in the forefront. And I, I, I truly appreciate uh, what you guys do. And uh, certainly it was disappointing. But the bottom line is, is that you know, we made some mistakes, but you throw all the mistakes out, it comes down to fourth and one. If it's fourth and one for Graham, then we supposed to win. It just seems like you know that game really kind of epitomized the season. A lot, like so close. Of the year. It, is it tough to look back? I mean, and, and I know there's one game to go, but is it tough to look back and, and think of all the, the missed chances? I mean, my goodness. Absolutely not. The thing that, that brings most uh, brings comes to mind for me is the fact that we were in six ball games where we actually could have won with the last in the last snap of the ball, and certainly that all goes boils down to a lot of leadership, boils down to maturity, and certainly uh, we look forward to it. I think it was a learning process for a number of individuals that have been in that situation where we talk about that you know football games are won by football players making football plays, but any time you have the opportunity to win right there in your hand, you certainly got to seize that opportunity. And uh, Southern did an outstanding job. Take my hat off to Pete Richardson. They kept it close. We knew we were going to be there at the end, and it came down to either a touchdown or a first down. Even though I thought they kind of snubbed us at the end, and I thought we had a first down. But it still shouldn't have mattered. We had the ball. We had the play. We had worked on that on the different plays. They overloaded the, the right side of the defense like we had anticipated that they were going to do. It was just a matter of us. Get it in, and we didn't get it in. How uh, how tough it's going to be for the guys to get back up for one more game? You know, it seems like the season, you know, rhythmically peaks with the Bayou Classic and then the the SWAC championship. Possibly, you know, that's not there later. How, how tough is it going to be to get up for this? Well, game? our approach is that this is going to be the beginning of the new season, and uh, and that's the way we approach each and every one of them. And it's going to be a tough task. You know one thing, all corners going to come down here because they, they think we're truly wounded, but certainly it's going to be how well we prepare this week, and I think our guys are going to do a good job. It's just a matter of coming out consistently, putting together 60 minutes. We kind of squandered a number of opportunities in the first half here in the Bayou Classic there, and I said all the time, if Gremlin plays 64 minutes, Certainly at the end, we'll always have an opportunity to win. And I thought we had that opportunity. Southern just rose to the occasion and wanted it more than we did. And as a result, we ended up losing by three points. But uh, overall, I thought our guys played hard during the whole entire ball game. We did make a few mistakes, but the mistakes were, were all forgotten when we got down to fourth and one because it was on the line. And that's what you live for. If you're a little boy in the backyard, Bayou Classic, Super Bowl, state championship, it's in your hand. That's where you wanted to be, and uh, we just didn't rise to the occasion. But overall, our guys did a good job. You, uh, you obviously want to win every game, sixty to nothing. But would you like to see the last game of the year, a close game, have the chance for your team to make a play and for them to make a play? Because there's been so many chances where they could have made a play and haven't. You know what I mean? Would it be good to? carry over to the next year to see him score late to win a game or something like that? Well, I was just listening to a number of other folks talk about it, and um, I had an opportunity to talk to Randy Himes yesterday, who's an outstanding quarterback here. He's been an outstanding wide receiver in the, in the National Football League. And one of the things that he, he came in and he talked about all the time that everybody got from him is that I used to always tell him, big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games. And, and he walked in yesterday, and that's what he told me on yesterday. He said, Coach, it's all balls down to playmaking. And I love for our guys to come out and put it all together at the beginning of the new season in 2007 and, and play the way that we know they can play and make all the plays that we think that they can play. And don't get me wrong, we have guys that have stepped up and made plays, but theoretically it wasn't enough of them in order for us to be successful. And I think it's it's been a – it's not as bad as it seemed because I thought we had a lot of bright uh, bright spots in, in our season and we're going to hone in on it. We're going to hit this road and get out and start our recruiting process and uh, reload this thing and get ready to go next year. And certainly it's going to be a boot camp for the all season. And we're going to work, work, work to get back where we need to be. Such a large senior class uh, playing their final game on Saturday. Just talk about uh, what those guys have meant to the program. Well, those guys actually I, I really have meant a whole lot to the program. You know, we were a little disappointed in the fact that we didn't overall get the kind of senior leadership that we needed to bring these younger guys along. But the one thing that all of them has is the fact 
99.9% uh, .9 of them has graduated. All of them have a, a national championship ring on their finger, and uh, certainly we hope they can go out in America and be outstanding citizens and do some things in order to help Grambling move into another level. And it's all about taking Grambling to another level is it, really what it's about. And uh, certainly this year alone, we have not played up the Grambling-type standard but the kind of effort that we put in and uh, what we see within our program with the, the Prop 48s that we already have here on campus, with the number of guys that have already committed to come to Grambling, and the program is in great shape, and we look forward to next year. You guys physically dominated Alcorn State on the road last year. Uh, you think they'll, they'll be gunning for you uh, because of what happened last year? Well, everybody be gunning for Grambling. It's not any different. I think they're going to come in. And they're going to try to bring that pressurized defense because we still got uh, our quarterback still got to prove to the world that they can handle the, the pressure that's basically going to come and they, that they can make the throws. And we still got to be able to protect. And on the flip side of the McCoy kid is an outstanding running back. And they're going to run the ball up to see whether or not we can actually stop the run for one more time. So that's really the things that we got to work on. We got to work on getting some offense and defensive line, bring some more linebackers back in the fold and bring some corners in here where we can play the kind of football that we want to play. But overall, they're in, in process, and uh, we look forward to it. Is there a set quarterback for Saturday, or is that still to be determined in practice? Oh, absolutely not. Brandon Lennon is going to be the quarterback on Saturday. We expect for him to come in and have an outstanding game and get ready for the, for the new season.